What's up everyone, April Dunham here. In this Template Tuesday video, I'm going to share a new PowerApps web part built by my friend Hugo Bernier. I'm really excited about this web part because it allows you to power up your SharePoint embedded PowerApps. This is an enhanced version of the built-in PowerApps web part for SharePoint. This version allows you to do multiple things. One, customize the width and height of the embedded PowerApp. Two, allows you to pass theming components from SharePoint to your Power App so you can make it match the theme of your SharePoint site. And three, what I'm most excited about, is the ability to pass parameters from items on your SharePoint page to the Power App. I'll show you how you can install this and how it works coming up. This enhanced PowerApps web part was built by my friend Hugo Bernier, and he has graciously provided the SharePoint package file for us on his GitHub. So all we have to do is come to his GitHub, which of course I'll provide this URL in the video notes, click on this SPPKG file, which will download that to your desktop. And then all we need to do is go to your SharePoint app catalog. This is something that you would have to have access to as a SharePoint admin to the app catalog site, but it's a way that you can upload custom web parts and apps to your SharePoint environment. So if you don't have access to this, just send this to your IT or whoever might have access to see if they can install that for you. You'll see I have one called apps and it's really just a SharePoint site that allows you to upload custom apps. So you can go to that, click on the distribute apps for SharePoint, select upload, choose files, points to that new web part that you downloaded. It'll prompt you to trust it. And at that point, it's in your app catalog. So you can see that I already have that here and it's deployed. And then all you have to do is any SharePoint site that you would like to use this web part in, you can go to that site, go to the site contents, add an app, and click to install the React Enhanced Power Apps client side web part. Now that you know how to get this installed, I'm going to take a step back and talk about why you would want to use this. And let's start by talking about the currently available Power Apps web part for SharePoint. There are many reasons why you might want to embed a Power App in your SharePoint site. If you're using SharePoint as your internet, you might want to embed it on, say, your department homepage so that users can easily get to that without having to go outside of SharePoint. So today with the current web part, if we edit this page and click on the plus button somewhere here, we can search for Power Apps and you'll see the Microsoft Power Apps web part. And you'll notice when we install it, there are literally no settings that we can configure. The only thing we can do is give it a URL for a Power App. So for example, I will come over here and maybe I have this My Training app. I'll just show you what that looks like. This particular app is a tablet slash desktop optimized app for a training portal. So if I wanted to embed that, I would come to my make.powerapps app portal, click on the dots and go to the details screen. And I would copy this web link. So I'm just gonna copy the web link, go back to my site and I'll paste that in the app or web link ID. And you'll see the only property I have to configure is to show or hide a border. Now, if I close out of this, now that that's embedded and I republish my page so we can see what this would look like, you'll see that's not very usable at all, is it? It is tiny. It's trying to fit it in this third column and that's just too small to use. Uh, you'll see we can edit the page and maybe if we added in a section below here that was like a full width section, so one column, and we'll just drag this Power Apps web part down to this new section. That's one column that should take up the full width of our SharePoint page. But you notice even with that, it's pretty small. It's not taking up that much room. So it's more usable than when it was in the third, uh, but not so much. So this is a really limited web part right now. So what Hugo has did for us is create an enhanced version of this. So if we go, I have another page where I can demo the functionality of his enhanced Power Apps web part. 
First, let's just try that same scenario of adding that training application. So I'm going to come over here and see on this section, I'm going to add our new enhanced Power Apps web part. Select add an app and we'll put in a link. First thing you notice without us configuring anything is it's taking up the full width of this column. Much more usable without having to do any additional configuration. And if I were to do the same thing that I did before and I have a full one column layout below and I drag this web part down there, you'll see now that's truly taking up the full width of the screen. So just to compare, here's the built-in Power Apps web parts in a one column layout on a SharePoint page. And here's the enhanced, let's just republish this to make it a true comparison. Here's the enhanced web part in that same configuration. Much, much better. Now that's without doing any additional configuration that this web part allows us. Let's take a look at this other use case that I'm showing up above. In this case, I actually have a phone optimized Power App that I've embedded in here with Hugo's enhanced Power Apps web part. This particular Power App has a back end of a SharePoint list to hold help desk tickets. So you'll see what I did is on this page on the left, I have that SharePoint tickets list surfaced up as a web part on this page. And then to the right of it, I've used Hugo's enhanced Power Apps web part to embed the Power App that has this list as a back end. Now this is where his web part gets really interesting. What I can do is I can click on one of the items in this list that I have embedded as a web part. And you'll see as soon as I do that, our Power App kind of refreshes and look what it did. It went directly to the display form screen of my Power App when I clicked on one of these items in the list. So what this is doing is it's allowing me to pass parameters from one web part to another with his enhanced Power Apps web part. This is really powerful. So this would be a great way to replace, say a SharePoint customized Power App with a standalone app, but still get similar functionality. I know before in some of my previous videos, I showed how you could use SharePoint list formatting to open a Power App when you click on a link. But the main issue with that is it actually opens up a new tab in your browser and navigates you away from SharePoint. Well, with this method, you don't have to do that. It seems like a built-in embedded experience in this case. So not only can I pass information from here to the Power App, and that's just done from the web part configuration side, it's simple, but then from the Power App side, it's just a matter of reading a parameter. So let's take a look and see how this is done, starting first with his web part. So here's the Power Apps Embedded Web Part. If I go into its settings by clicking the Edit Web Part button, you'll see one of the options that is in here is Dynamic Properties. The default is off, but if you toggle this to on, you'll see we have some drop downs that we can configure. So one, we can either get properties from the page environment itself. So good use case for this. Say you have a time off request Power App and the request should be routed to a department manager and you're using this and embedding it on all your SharePoint department sites. Well, it would be cool then if you could use this dynamic property from the site itself, pass in say the site title and in this case, if it's IT, then I know in my Power App that it should be routed to the IT manager. So just one example of where you might use these site properties and passing those dynamically in a Power App. What I was doing for this case of the tickets is I was using the tickets data source. So this is going to take any other web part that you have on this page and it's going to allow you to connect to that. So in this case, I have my tickets list. And then I can get properties from this. And what I chose was this column containing the filter value. So I can get data from any of these columns that I have surfaced up in this embedded SharePoint list on the page. And I can choose the column from this list. So I'm just mapping it on ID. So I'm going to pass the ID of the selected item to my Power App. And the parameter name is going to be called ID. Now from here, all I need to do is make a tweak to my Power App. I have the Power App open here, and you'll see I've went to the app on start, and all I'm doing is I'm doing an if statement, and I'm checking to see if a parameter exists called ID. 
using the is blank function with a exclamation point within it. So if you put an exclamation point in front of the is blank, that means it's the opposite if it's not blank. So I'm saying if the parameter of ID is not blank, meaning I have passed that in from somewhere, then I want to set a global variable called selected item ID to whatever that value is of the parameter. And then I want to navigate to the detail screen. So I've set the parameter value to a variable and I'm moving automatically to the detail screen. If it is blank, then it's just gonna stay on this browse screen and let you select an item from here and go to the detail screen. And the last piece to make this work on the screen that you're navigating to, if it's a form control like I'm showing here, you'll need to go to that form controls item property and add a condition to dynamically set the selected item. So since this app can work both, like say on a phone where someone's just using it to select an item from that gallery and see the details or in this embedded scenario, then we need to accommodate for that. So we need to check if our variable of selected item ID is blank. If it is, then we know we just need to have this operate as a traditional standalone app. So get the browse gallery one selected item and surface that up in our form. But if it's not, I have passed it in that parameter. So I need to look up to our data source, compare on the ID with the ID of the parameter that we've passed in. And then so that will make it surface up that item. And this is the same concept that I've shown in several videos when I talk about like deep linking and working with passing parameters. So just in a few simple steps, we're able to have this interactive element to our Power App. The other thing that's pretty cool, if we expand out this web part, is the theme option. I did a video on embedding Power Apps in Teams, and in that I've shown how if you create a Power App directly from Teams, then you can inherit the team's styles. We didn't have that for SharePoint until now with Hugo's web part. So what this theme option is allowing us to do is we can take a property of the theme of a site, such as say this default state background. So I can take that and then pass that into Power Apps as a parameter like we did with the selected item to change our colors based off of that. So I've set this property. It's going to be called default state background. So I got to remember that. So to test this out, let's go back to our app and say we want to customize this rectangles background based off of the theme. So one way to do that, we could just go directly into this rectangle object and go to its fill. And what we can do is we can kind of replace this with a formula. So we can say if not blank, that param default state background, then we want the color to be whatever that param default state background is. But to do that, we're going to use the color value function so that it will format that correctly as a color value. So we'll use default state background again, and then comma, else if that is blank, then just use the default blue that we're seeing here. So to test this out, let's save and publish our app, refresh our page, and you'll see that the default background was this light gray, so our background color changed. So you could use that same method throughout your application to customize the colors and the theme of your Power Apps application to match your SharePoint theme. And the final thing I'll show you is the ability to customize the width. So you noticed on the first example where I embedded the training app, it was pretty good right out of the box with kind of responding and making it fit the area but you have even more granular control over that with the appearance section. So you can either use the resize proportion to kind of fit it into a certain aspect ratio like we're seeing here, or we have the ability to do a custom aspect ratio and even a fixed height. So this will force it to fill in with a certain height. So that's what I did for this one to make it look native without that gray border like we're seeing here. I did a fixed height, in this case of 670, to accommodate for that. And you'll see as I change it real time, it's going to show you what that's going to look like. So if I do only 500, I have some border on the edges, which I don't want. But if I change it to 670, that's pretty perfect. So it looks great. And I have way more control over the width and height of this than I did with the native web part.
So if you do find yourself in a scenario when you want to leverage the capability to embed a Power App in SharePoint, I definitely encourage you to check out this web part. So a big thanks and props to Hugo for creating this great web part. If you're interested in learning more about the different ways that you can integrate Power Apps with SharePoint, and maybe why you would use a customized list form versus embedding it this way or a standalone app, let me know um, in the comments and I might add that as a future video. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.